Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg, Pep. P, E, P, Pep. Kellogg, Pep, the sunshine cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Jimmy Olsen reports his visit with the boss to Clark Kent, the Man of Steel realizes with grave concern the cunning of the fox they must not fail to trap. Hi there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, did you ever know anybody like Leftover Larry? He's the sort of fella who never quite finishes the last bit of food in his dish. Well, Leftover Larry is certainly out of style these days, particularly when it comes to a bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Boy, think of the good eating he passes up. The crisp golden toasted goodness in this sunny breakfast cereal. And think of the fine nutrition in every spoonful of Kellogg's Pep. Vitamin B1 and energy vitamin, more than twice as much as in sun-ripened whole wheat. Sunshine vitamin D2, your whole daily minimum need in every one ounce. And think of the fellows and girls just like you who need these good golden cereal grains like the whole wheat in Kellogg's Pep to help them grow up sturdy and strong. You see, gang, these children can't run and play as you do because they're hungry. And that's why we're sending grains across the seas these days. And that's why it's especially important for you to help guard against waste at your house. So when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocer's, Make sure there's no waste. If you pour your own cereal, pour it carefully. Tell the rest of your family to be careful, too. It's such an easy thing to do, and you'll be helping to feed fellas and girls all over the world who might go hungry. And now, the adventures of Superman. Playing the dangerous role of a young tough, Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter for the Daily Planet, has thus far succeeded in carrying out the details of Clark Kent's plan. A plan to learn the identity of whoever is behind an organized attempt to stir up racial and religious prejudice in the city of Metropolis. So well has Jimmy succeeded that he was granted an interview with the mysterious leader of the hate-spreading organization. As we continue now, it is one o'clock in the morning. At Clark Kent's apartment where he is making his headquarters, Jimmy gives Kent the startling details of the interview. Listen. The lawyer took me into a room just off the foyer. It was fixed up like an office with a desk, a couple of chairs, a big safe, and some other stuff. Never mind the furnishings. What about the man? Well, I couldn't see him. He was standing behind a black velvet curtain at one end of the room. Kind of black? Well, why? He said his work was too important to let too many people know who he was. Oh. I tried to get him to tell me his name or come out from behind the curtain, but no soap. What about his voice? Well, it was kind of flat and hard. Was it? Would you recognize it if you heard it again? I think so. It was a mean voice. Yeah, I shouldn't wonder. All right, Jim, now tell me what he said. Well, what didn't he say? Honest, Mr. Kent, I had all I could do to keep from ripping down that curtain and pasting him in the nose. Yeah, I know. He never heard such stuff. For instance? Oh, all about how they were trying to get the Christians and the Jews to hate each other by telling them lies. Mm -hmm. He had the nerve to come right out and say that if you tell the Christians enough lies about the Jews and the Jews enough lies about the Christians, they'll get to believe them. Yeah, sure, that's what Hitler said. Go on, Jim. Well, he kept saying stuff like that, and I kept getting madder and madder. But I knew I couldn't show it, so I held myself back. Finally, he said he was going to give me a job to do because... Green, the lawyer, thought I was a smart boy. Uh-oh, I was afraid of that. You were afraid. He told me what the job was. I could hardly catch my breath. What is it? I'm supposed to go to an art gallery owned by a man named Klein. And I'm supposed to slash some of the pictures in the gallery with a razor blade. What? Well, of all the dirty, disgusting things. He said Klein made a big contribution to the Unity House building fund, and they were out to get him. Oh. Well, here's a list of the pictures I'm supposed to cut up. Five of them. Mm-hmm. Two Rembrandts, a Rubens, a Franz Hall, and two that aren't familiar. <laughs> you know what these pictures are worth, Jim? No, what? Well, the Rembrandts must be worth fifty to $100,000 a piece. Same with the Rubens. Jeepers. We've got to stop them, Jim, if it's the last thing we do. There's no end to a thing like this. From paintings, they'll go to people. They'll slash each one of us if we don't agree with them. Yeah, but what are we going to do now? I'm in a spot. If I don't do the job he gave me, he'll know I'm the spot. You'll do the job. Sleeping lizard, you mean I'm going to cut up all those pictures? Oh, hardly. We'll double-cross them and still keep you in their good graces. In fact, you'll do this job so well that it may result in you're getting to meet Mr. Rat face-to-face. -face. I don't see how I can do it. This way. In the morning, we'll contact Mr. Klein, the owner of the art gallery, and have a talk with him. We'll tell him all about this. And you think he's going to let me cut up his paintings? Certainly not. The paintings won't be cut up. 
At least they'll only be cut up for publicity purposes. Just so your man behind the curtain will think you've done the job. Oh, I get it. We'll run a story saying the paintings were slashed, but actually they won't be. Right. I'm sure we can get Mr. Klein's cooperation. Oh, uh, one more thing before it gets too late. Was anything said about an attack on Rabbi Stone? You know, he's a member of the Unity House Committee. No, why? Well, I forgot to tell you this, Jim, but I got a call this afternoon from Father Sheehan. Seems Rabbi Stone received a letter warning him to resign from the committee or suffer the consequences. The letter said it was a last warning. Well, when did he get the letter? This morning. I just wondered whether maybe you'd heard anything about it. No, not a thing. All I heard, and Muggs told me in the pool room, was the next one thereafter was Mr. Murphy. Oh? He's a member of the committee, too. Muggs said they had a special job to do on him. Oh, well, evidently they decided to save Murphy and go after Rabbi Stone. So what time is it, Jim? I watched out. Uh, 20 minutes after 1. Mm-hmm. Would Muggs be at the pool room now? Yeah, I guess so. He hangs around there most of the night. Are you too tired to take a rundown and find out what you can about their plans? No, I'm not tired. Well, suppose you do that then, huh? At the same time, you can tell Muggs how you got out of jail. And, uh, incidentally, let him take all the credit. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, what'd I do with my cap? Uh, well, here it is. Oh, thanks. I'll get back as soon as you can, Jim. I'll wait up for you. Okay. And, Jim. Yes? In case I haven't told you, you're doing a swell job. Come on in here, Olsen. Okay. You only got a minute because we're going on a job. Big boss fixed it for you to beat the rap, huh? Yeah, thanks to you, Muggs. Forget it. You see, it's like I told you. We got protection. We're working for smart guys. They don't fool around. The lawyer took me up to the boss's hideout, Muggs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How come the guy never shows himself? You see him? Yeah. He always talks behind that black curtain. Yeah, same with me. What do you have to say? Nothing much. I told him what a great guy you was. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Olsen. Well, I got to blow now. Me and a couple of guys got a job to do. Well, how about taking me along? Huh? I ain't done a job with you guys yet. Okay. Okay, come on. What kind of a job is it? I'm going to mess up a Jew synagogue. Hey, Skinny. What's this? Joe, let's go. Is this the same thing, Muggs? That kid's clubhouse stuff? Yeah, the guy that runs the synagogue. The guy by the name of Stone. He's on a committee for the joint. What are we going to do? Let's sneak in and bust up the synagogue. Creeps. What's the matter? You getting chicken hot? Uh, no, no, but uh, b- before I go with you guys, I, I think I'd better stop off in a drugstore and, and... And what? I got a pain in my stomach. Something I ate, I guess. I'll meet you guys at the place. That's okay. We got time. We'll stop off at the drugstore with you and grab a Coke. Come on. Again, caught in a trap. Unable to contact Clark Kent to tell him the attack on Rabbi Stone's synagogue is going to take place immediately, Jimmy dies a thousand deaths as he follows Muggs and his young henchman out of the pool room. The excuse that he has a stomachache and would like to stop off at a drugstore hasn't worked. What can he do? We'll know in a moment when we return for the tense and exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, old man son does a lot more for you than just make a suntan in summertime. Sure, he's the guy who makes vitamin D for you. The sunshine vitamin that helps you grow strong bones and teeth. And did you know that Kellogg's Pep has this in common with sunshine? That very same vitamin D effect of sunshine. Why, just one ounce of Pep gives you your whole daily minimum need of sunshine vitamin D. Plus, twice as much of an energy vitamin, B1, as sun-ripened whole wheat. And is it good? Why, Pep is loaded with golden toasted flavor, crisp and crunchy as can be. So it's easy as anything to clean up every last bit in your bowl. And that's extra important nowadays, you know, because the cereal grains, like the famous whole wheat in Kellogg's Pep, have been picked out to give nourishment to hungry children overseas. So here's what to do, gang. When Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, just make sure it's not wasted. If you pour your own cereal, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Tell your younger brothers and sisters to be careful, too. That's your job in helping to take care of fellows and girls all over the world for going hungry. Informed that Muggs and his gang of young toughs are about to make an attack on a Jewish temple of worship, Gilson made a desperate attempt to get away from the gang to call Clark Kent. He complained of a stomachache and suggested he drop off at the drugstore to get something for it. But Muggs' reply was that they would all stop in with him and get a Coke. As we continue now, Jimmy and Muggs and three members of the juvenile gang are at the soda fountain of an all-night drugstore. How's gang well it be? Coke's for us, and this guy's got a pain in his stomach. In the chest, Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I'll give you a bite, Cap. Okay. That'll fix you up, Olsen. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Hey, yeah, uh, bub. 
Bring it down. Thanks. Down the hatch. Go ahead. Yeah. That'll fix Ugh. you up. It always does the trick, don't it, Jill? Yeah, sure. Every time. Oh, I, I still got the pain. Let's give it a chance. Come on, let's go. Hey, drink up, you guys. We've got to get rolling. How much real are you, Cap? Uh, 20 for the coke and a dime for the bike cop. There's half a buck. Keep the change. Thanks, Bob. Okay, let's go. Come on. Hey, hey, Muggs. What's the matter? I, I still got the pain. Maybe I better not go along with you guys. Maybe I better sit here and wait till it goes away. Hey, Bob, maybe he's got appendicitis. I know a guy. Who oh, asked you? Okay. That ain't my funeral. You want to go see a sawbones also? Oh, no, no. I don't need no doctor. All I got is a stomachache. All right, you take it easy. We don't need you on this job anyway. Me and Leppy and Skinny and Joe can handle it, okay? Are you sure, Muggs? Yeah, sure. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Muggs. Thanks. Forget it. Come on, guys. I'm ahead of you, Muggs. Hey, Bob, where's it hurt you in your stomach? Uh-huh. Your stomach, where's it hurt you? Oh, it don't hurt so much anymore. I gotta make a phone call. Oh, boy. I thought I'd never get away from them. Mr. Kent's number? Oh, yeah. Metropolis 4320. 4320. I hope there's time to stop them. It's taken so long. Why doesn't he answer? I could call the police, but I'm afraid to without getting Mr. Kent's okay. Please, Mr. Kent. Please answer. Please. moment as the phone in Clark Kent's apartment remains unanswered, Jimmy becomes more and more panicky. Muggs and his young hoodlums are on their way to Rabbi Stone's temple. Soon, not even the police will be able to stop them in this latest act of violence against not only a house of solemn worship, but against every decent human being who respects the rights of others to honor their God in their own way. The rat-like forces of religious hatred and intolerance are on the march, cloaked in darkness. Can Jimmy reach Kent? who, as we know, is Superman, in time to stop them. We'll know tomorrow when we hear the most exciting episode of this entire series, the episode entitled The Fight for Honor. So be sure to listen, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. Lots of you kids have dogs, and I'll bet one of the things they enjoy most is the tug of war. Dogs seem to get such a kick out of using their strong teeth and muscles. Now, uh, if you want to help keep your dog strong and husky, Feed him Kellogg's Grow Pup dog food. It's just wonderful for dogs and has a good meaty flavor dogs like. There are three different kinds. There's Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellet. Ask your mother to get Kellogg's Grow Pup today and see if your dog doesn't gobble it right away. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>